From the CISO series, it's cybersecurity headlines. It's Thursday, June 22nd, 2023. New DOJ cyber prosecution team will go after nation state threat actors. The U.S. DOJ has announced that its National Security Division has a new cyber section dubbed NATSEC Cyber. NETSEC Cyber was created in response to findings from the 2022 Comprehensive Cyber Review conducted by the U.S. Attorney General's Office. Assistant Attorney General Matthew G. Olson said, quote, This new section will allow NSD to increase the scale and speed of disruption of campaigns and prosecutions of nation-state threat actors, state-sponsored cyber criminals, associated money launderers, and other cyber-enabled threats to national security, end quote. Olson added that NATSEC will position prosecutors to begin investigating reported cyber threats in the earliest stages. Apple fixes zero days used to deploy triangulation spyware. Researchers from Kaspersky have released more details about an iOS backdoor they've named TriangleDB. The spyware leverages zero-click exploits via the iMessage platform and allows attackers to dump iCloud keychain data and load additional Mach O modules in memory to harvest file contents, geolocation, installed iOS applications, and running processes. The malware has a lifespan of 30 days, after which it gets automatically uninstalled unless the time period is extended by the attackers. The threat actors behind the campaign are currently unknown, although Russia is accusing the U.S. government of carrying out a reconnaissance operation. Apple pushed fixes across nearly all iPhones, iPads, and Apple Watches on Wednesday. Schumer unveils strategy to regulate AI. On Wednesday, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer unveiled a framework for regulating artificial intelligence and warned that Congress must join the AI revolution now or risk losing its only chance to regulate the rapidly moving technology. He revealed plans to launch a series of AI Insight forums featuring top AI developers, executives, scientists, community leaders, workers, and national security experts, which will form the foundation for more detailed policy proposals for Congress. Schumer said, quote, We have no choice but to acknowledge that AI's changes are coming and in many cases are already here. End quote. Move It Ransomware Victim List Continues to Grow. Gen Digital, the parent company of cybersecurity subsidiaries Avast and Norton, confirmed on Tuesday that the personal information of its employees was compromised in yet another Move It ransomware attack. The company said compromised data includes names, addresses, employee IDs, and email addresses. Gen Digital said all known vulnerabilities have been remediated and that there is no impact to customers or partners or their core IT systems and services. The news comes after Metro Vancouver Transit Police confirmed earlier this week that it too fell victim to hackers gaining unauthorized access to files on its MoveIt server. And on Tuesday, three plaintiffs from Louisiana representing more than 100 individuals filed a class action lawsuit in Massachusetts against MoveIt producer Progress Software. The lawsuit indicates that after their data was compromised in the Louisiana Office of Motor Vehicles MoveIt breach, affected individuals have become targets of social engineering attacks. The complaint also claims Progress Software failed to notify impacted victims. And now, a word from our sponsor, Wing Security. Shadow IT is an evolving pain and security risk, especially in today's decentralized work environments. Now's the time to regain control of your SaaS usage by taking advantage of Wing's free SaaS Shadow IT discovery solution. Check out Wing Security to self-onboard today, no strings attached. Mondelez International's info compromised in third-party breach. The producer of Oreo cookies and Ritz crackers, among other snack foods, has warned 51,000 of its past and present employees that their personal info was stolen from the company's third-party law firm. Hackers broke into the network of Brian Cave Layton Paisner LLP and were able to access social security numbers, names, addresses, dates of birth, marital status, gender, employee identification numbers, and retirement plan info belonging to current and former Mondelez workers. As a side note, Mondelez was among the global companies hit in the NotPetya outbreak and recently settled a $100 million plus cleanup bill with its cyber insurer, Zurich American Insurance Company. Emerging ransomware group 8Base doxes SMBs globally. Since at least April 2022, a ransomware gang called 8Base, not to be confused with the Florida-based software company of the same name, has been conducting double extortion attacks against small and mid-sized businesses. Victims span industries including science and technology, manufacturing, retail, construction, and healthcare. 
In May, the group dumped data belonging to 67 organizations on the cyber underground. Researchers say little is known about the gang's tactics, techniques, and protocols, but their leak site includes a terms of service section outlining 13 rules, including a prohibition against police involvement. Eight bases already doxed 29 new businesses this month. 63% of IT leaders measure IT success by reduced risk. A survey by Rocket Software took a look at the biggest challenges facing IT leaders of large organizations and their approach to modernizing their IT department. The report revealed that the top concerns among IT leaders include improving overall IT performance, data security, process risk and compliance, and the need to improve agility. Respondents noted that the top measure of success within their IT organization was increased efficiency at 71%, which they defined as faster DevOps and automated processes. Optimized resources and reduced risk were also among the top measures of IT success, coming in at 67% and 63% respectively. UPS discloses data breach after customer info used in SMS phishing. In a somewhat sneaky fashion, multinational shipping company UPS has alerted some Canadian customers that their personal info may have been exposed. UPS entitled their letters, quote, Fighting Fishing and Smishing, an update from UPS, end quote, which seemed to be a reminder to customers about the dangers of phishing. Turns out, however, the letters were actually data breach notifications, stating that some package recipients received SMS phishing messages demanding payment in order for their packages to be delivered. UPS found that the attackers used its package lookup tools to access delivery details, including the recipient's personal contact information between February 2022 and April 2023. And that does it for today's cybersecurity headlines, but be sure to check out our latest Defense in Depth episode, which dives into how to create a positive security culture. Also tomorrow, Friday, June 23rd, we'll be running down the top cybersecurity news stories of the week with an expert CISO guest during our Cybersecurity Headlines Week in Review show. The live stream starts at 3.30 p.m. Eastern, 12.30 Pacific, and you can join us live and share your hot takes by registering over at CISOseries.com. Thanks for listening. I'm Sean Kelly, reporting for the CISO Series. Cybersecurity headlines are available every weekday. Head to CISOseries.com for the full stories behind the headlines.